Hi everybody, this is Pam at the Paper Outpost. Are you ready for some good old papery fun today? Do you love books? Do you love libraries? Do you love library cards? Do you love library cards and pockets? Well, here's an actual library card and a pocket. Okay, and I thought we would make a library, a handmade library card and a pocket for our junk journal. Wouldn't that be fun? And we can make the book anything we like. Like this one happens to be The Dream of the Butterfly by L. Barnstorm. I was going to say Brainstorm. That might have been better. But uh, you can make the book and you can sign the names from whoever you want. You could put Albert Einstein and uh, Marie Curie and, and things like that. That would be fun. So uh, I happened to ha receive this as a gift and it so inspired me. I thought these would be absolutely fun and easy to make for our junk journals. So why don't we do it? Why don't we do it? Let's do it. Okay, so let's grab some paper. Uh, basically, you're going to, for the, let's make the pocket first. You're going to need a long strip of paper, excuse me, that is about um, eight, okay, it's going to be about eight and a half inches this way and about four inches this way. So eight and a half and four, okay, and that's going to give us enough room to make this baby, okay? And we need it this long because we're going to have to fold up, okay? Um, now, if you don't have this as a template, the, the design is very simple, so don't, don't sweat about it, but you want to put this, you want to start thinking somewhere in the middle and uh, let's say you got a ruler all right uh, so we know that our actual I'm just going to tell you because we, we kind of have to know this measurement uh, the average standard library pocket is about three and a half wide okay so you want to think I need I need at least three and a half wide but you're going to need wider than that why why do you need wider than that because we have to create these little flaps so basically let's just get the eight and the four down first. Okay, I'm just gonna measure this. There, eight, I'm sorry, eight and a half is here. Okay, and then four. I know you can't see this, but I'm coming back, coming back. Okay, eight and a half. One, two, three, four. Okay. So I made a mark at the four and the eight. Let me back this up a little bit. Okay, there we go. Okay, so let's go ahead and snip this off. Okay, just using my craft mat here so I go square. Okay, there's my mark. There, so this is going to give us eight and a half long. Doesn't that just bring back memories of the old Dewey Decimal System and all that fun stuff? That's right. And then we're going to... Uh, get this so it's four across and that's going to give us plenty to work with and we'll just go ahead and cut that down and this is a cream colored piece of paper that's a little bit thicker than regular paper not super thick but just a little thicker than regular paper if you have that it's just going to make a nice pop if you just have regular paper that's fine too and you can also make these out of any uh, scrapbook paper if you want to go uh, wild and fancy and just make one out of a pretty pattern paper too that would be fun okay so now the concept is and i'm actually going to deconstruct this one so you can see what it looks like I'm going to tear my own work. Oh, here we go. Okay, good thing I didn't glue it well. All right, so she said right before she has to tear it. Okay, it's all right. It's only paper. It's only paper, people. It's not going to bleed. It's okay. I can re-glue it because this I would mount onto something anyway, so nobody would see that. But basically, this is the shape we're looking for. Okay, so it's got a long, and then it's got a short, and the short has two flaps. Okay, so this is what it's going to look like. It's going to nest something like that. But let's say you don't have this. Okay, so let me just give you an idea um, how long this top piece is before we fold. It's around the four and a half mark. And I, I know I'm so sorry for all the measuring. There's just no other blasted way to do this. <laughs> okay, around the four and a half mark. I probably didn't account for that little bit on the ruler, but that's the way it goes. Okay, let's make some marks here. All right, so... That's going to be where this comes down to about here. So we kind of know that's where the fold is going to be, okay? Um, but now, uh, what I want to do is I want to take a hair off. Let's, let's draw the line so we can all see it. I know, isn't re measuring riveting? I know, I know, I feel the same way. But these are just so darn cute. And you really don't have to measure, measure these. You could sort of just know. But I, I had to do it a few times before I finally figured it out. See, this, uh, this end has to be longer than this end. 
Yeah. Okay. And uh, it just it just does. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go in about maybe a, I guess whatever this little square is like maybe a quarter of an inch or something like that. Um, we've got to make sure that our pocket fits. So let's see. Well, see, you don't have that yet. But what we're going to use for the card is something that we all know and love. Where where did I put them? They're right there somewhere. Yeah, there they are, right where I left them. Don't worry. It's an index card. It happens to be the same size, magically, as a regular library card. Okay, maybe it's a, the library card's a smidgen smaller, but we're, we're splitting hairs here. We're splitting hairs. It's no big deal. Just go for it. And so if you have a regular index card, we're going to use that as the back, okay? And then we're going to put this here to kind of give us an idea of where we want our flaps. So looking at this again, Okay, these, the flaps are on the short part down here. So what you want to do is you want to do these little angle things like that. Okay, angle and angle. Okay, so now what we're going to cut away this, we're going to cut away this, so we're going to leave, just cut these corners off and leave the flapperoonies. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. Here we go. Okay, now we need that back. Because <laughs> I got to know where to cut. Okay, so I'm actually going to use this as a template. I think that's a good idea. That would reduce some of the measuring involved. Yes, let's do that. Let's just use this as the template. So we know we have to be just a little wider than that. And our line is already um, outside of that. So that's good. So when you go to cut, I would say cut even just a hair farther to the outside to give yourself a little comfortable wiggle room. Okay, here we go. There. All right. Whoop. That's what happens. Yep. It's slid. <laughs> it's okay though. Is it? Is it really okay, Pam? I don't know. Okay, here we go. All right. There we go. And let's cut that off. Okay. Same thing over here. I'm going to turn it around. I just feel like this side is grippier. Okay. And here we go. Ready? One, two, three. Oh, that was, where are we going? I have no idea. I'm just like, I'm driving without a license here. Scary. All right, here we go. And then we're just gonna cut that off. It works great in my mind. And it worked great in the, in the prototype. It's, you know, sometimes when you gotta show somebody else, everything goes hon honkly wonkly, you know? You know what I mean? Okay. All right, so there we have that. Okay, now we have to cut off these little corners and we don't need to be all must fuss about these. We can just come along and, and nip, snip them off. Yep, yep, there we go. And we're snipping them off, we're snipping them off. Okay, now we have this. What we're trying for is that. We're very close. Now we have to get the folds. Um, these flaps are probably a little wider, which is good. I think I went a little narrow here. So a little wider is good. Um, so let's go ahead and just, uh, this is probably the trickiest part, trying to fold this so it, it it's going to be a little bit wider than um, um, the other, the uh, the thing at the top because you can't bump into it. You need to go be like behind it. And if you have to readjust, you have to readjust. And sometimes just the old fold a -roo method is not a bad, not a bad process. See, I went too far in. See, can, see how that's too far in? Too far in. Like, okay, so now I know I got to come back a little bit. This is the, the fi fiddle fuddle part of it. There's probably a better way to do it, but this is where it is today. Okay. Oh, I, I sense, I sense squeezing in. I sense the squeeze in. I got to make this chubbier. So I'm going to show you on the real one. I'm going to find the real one. Here's the real one. You see how there's extra room here? They have breathing room so that it's very easy to get this inside and out. You see how much room there is each way? There's quite a bit. Yeah. So don't be afraid to have these be wider. Yeah. Okay. So you just go in there and widen them up a little more, Pam. Okay. Why not? Okay, there we go. Okay, I'm widening up. That was pretty wide, Pam. No, that's maybe too wide. Okay, there, there's a limit. You know, you have to, it's right in the middle. This is the fuddly part. Okay, there we go. I think that's pretty good. Let's see this side. I need to come in a little bit. Okay. Okay. There we go. No, that's not, that's good. There. Okay, let's see. Are we good? Okay, so it's just a little bit wider on either side. See, that's good. Now you want to fold this up at the foldy place. Okay. Now this is why we wanted one side longer than the other, because one side needs to peak up. 
Okay, there we go. See how we have this little elevation here? Just like they have this little elevation here. Yeah, see that? Okay. Um, now what we can do is we can take this and we can go like that and we can just round this corner or we can use our broken um, crocodile no, corner chomper and it still works even though it's broken, which is really kind of cool. Thank you, crocodile corner chomper, for still working. Get in there and give it a little snip and you have matching matching corners. You've seen so far, well, I'm going to bring you closer. Come in. There you are. All nestled. Okay, so now we're down to the gluing. I mean, that's that's pretty much it as far as the construction. So as you see, we have the long flappy part at the top, and then we have this. Okay, long flappy part and this. And then we're gonna we're gonna take these, open up those wings, and wrap them around. We're gonna glue them on the back. You can use any glue you like. I just happen to have the fabric fix here. I'm gonna use that because it's already oozing out because I just loaded the the bottle. Okay, there we go. And it's probably too much glue, but oh well. Yeah, it's all right. It's all good. We're in a crafty spirit. We're rolling with it and it's all grand. That's right. Oh, the family is slowly getting better in case anybody was worried. Um, there is slow progress. So we, we accept um, that as a blessing. So thank you very much for your prayers and wish, well wishes. Um, yep, I'm keeping close tabs on them. Yep, even though they're over in California, I'm keeping close tabs on them. Okay, so we have that. Now, the other thing this had was this sticker on the front. So I thought, why are those funky stickers? If you don't have a sticker, just cut out a piece of paper that looks like that. But I actually have that sticker. So I think I'm going to use that. I'm still recording, yes. Okay, I have to check periodically because there, okay. I'm gonna use my Scotch Create glue, uh, glue stick, eh, just to make sure it sticks. Cause sometimes it doesn't stick as well as we like. What on earth is that? Lord only knows. Oh gosh, you know what Sunny did today? Bless his little soul. He got a hold of a little spider outside and he chewed its legs off and the spider only had two legs left and it was kind of hobbling around. Oh, it was very sad when I talked about it. La 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 la. Okay, no, I, can't, I can't even think about it. La 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 la. He didn't mean, he didn't know. <laughs> oh God, it was awful. Can I tell you, it was horrible. Um, okay, so we have that and now we're going to, I just inked this up a little bit to make it look a little bit more distressed. Uh, and this is with walnut stain distress ink. Just regular old uh, crafter ink. Let's see it. I can show it to you. It doesn't have much of a label anymore, but that said walnut stain on it at one time. And here we go. Here we go. Okay. I'm, I'm just like aging it a little bit. Just a little bit. Yeah. But so you see how that, that fits very nicely. And I can glue this whole back onto a page. That would be so cute, right? Or you could even put this in the front um, of your journal or the back of a journal. Um, stuff it with money or something. I don't know. It would be fun. But okay. So let's, I, what I decided to do was copy the way they did this. So there's these strange little letters over here. So I've just grabbed a Sharpie pen with a fine tip. Does it say fine tip? I don't know. It just looks like it's got a, it's got a fine tip. Okay. And, uh, I thought, there it says fine. Yeah. I can't, I can't read. Okay. It would be nice if you wore glasses, Pam, then you could actually see what you're doing. Okay. There we go. I have the glasses on. Okay. Now, um, let me take you a little closer. We go closer, closer. Okay. There we go. So this is what we have. So I'm going to make something up. So that's JF. So I'm going to call this, we're going to make somebody else. We're going to make, um, um, T, uh, Z. How about that? And then it says bis. Okay, so I guess that's B I S part of the last name of the Bishop. So let's, let's give this, um, this faux library card pocket and, uh, uh, library card, a, an author's name. How about, uh, the last name will be, uh, Zambora. That sounds magical. How about Elsie? How about Elsie wrote this? Yes. Elsie Zambora. She sounds fascinating. And uh, so I would have Zam over here because that's how we would find her in the Dewey Decimal System. Somehow you would look, look under TZ and find Elsie Zambora. I don't know how you do that, but you do somehow. And um, then we are going to give this book a fabulous name. Now this other one, I came up with a great name. It's called The Dream of the Butterfly by L. Barnstorm. Yes, I thought that was fabulous. So let's go with, um, um, how about... Uh, mm, I'm going to say, this is, okay, very, very famous book. 
petal dust storm. I must have storm on the brain. Okay, petal dust storm. That's it. That's it. The book is called Petal Dust Storm. And notice that this was underlined, the title of the book, so I am going to underline it just like they did because I'm a big fat copycat. Okay, here we go. Using this little metal ruler. And here, oh, and it went off the edge. That's okay. It's a, it's a faux one, so that's all right. So that, and you know, I could type it out and stuff, but yeah, sometimes it's faster just to write it. And let's move along now to the actual library card. So we, we have this guy done. Let's back out a little bit so you can see. Okay. Um, and now I am searching. I'm fuddling and searching, and I found an example of a library card. I actually have the one that goes in here, but there's, there's not much written on it, and they just used another. Um, they were lazy. They just used the sticker method to do it. But this was back in the day when they actually like typed out each one. Could you imagine that? There was somebody there that typed out each one. Okay, so grab your um, uh, three by five index card. I got these from the Dollar Tree. They're just the thinny ones. And uh, we're going to make a mock one. Mockity mock mock. Here we go. So what I did was I just um, copied the lines somewhat and um, just wrote the same things in there that they had, except for, you know, I, I made my own people and stuff. I, well, I copied the first one. And I thought, oh, I can be more inventive than that. Sally Sue, you're on there. There you go. Okay, so let's go ahead and just copy what this looks like. So I'm going to put this here. So if you have never really seen, oops, come back, um, a library card before, or maybe you've seen it, but you just don't, you don't have photographic memory and you don't remember what it looks like. Here we go. So there's like a big chunk at the top. Oh, hang on. There we go. There's a big chunk at the top. So do that. Then there's another line. I should probably square this. I can I can get straighter lines. Oh, I see I'm already off. Okay, that's great. Okay. And then another one. I totally moved the example off so you can't see it, didn't I? Yeah, I did. Okay, sorry. Here we go. Can you see it? Nope. There we go. Okay. And uh, then we're going to do a little line, a little thinny line. And then a fatter line, not too fat. And then a thinny line. And then we're just going to come on and do a bunch of these. Okay. Now here's, it's better if you, you use your craft mat to keep things square. Mine is already not square. Um, so I'm just going to do my best. That's right. I'm just going to put a bunch of these. I'm not going to pre-measure them or anything. I'm just going to kind of go with it and eyeball it and uh, kind of guess as I go. You know that method? It's very... Um, popularly used in the mid-century of some year. Mm -hmm. Mid-century of some year. That made absolutely no sense. Did anybody catch that? Boy, yeah, it's one of those days. Okay. Um, here we go. Now, okay, so here I have my mock set up. And the first thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to bring you in here. It's easier. Okay. So I'm going to start with the numbers here. I'm just going to copy those because I just think they're absolutely fabulous. We've got what? 796.4? 7... 96.4. I'll do that little European 7 thing. Uh, they didn't have it there, but I, I decided to up it. And uh, F87 under it. F87. There we go. And then Frederick A. Bruce. No, 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 no. We are doing Zambora Elsie Petal Dust Storm. Here we go. <laughs> All right. Zambora. Come on, Pam, you got to spell it right. You made it up, Elsie. And what did I say? Petal dust storm. Where did you come up with that? I don't know. Petal dust storm. That's right. That's kind of like a, what's that thing called? An oxymoron, like a jumbo shrimp. Petal dust storm, right? Yeah, kind of, a little. Uh, okay, maybe not exactly, but you know what I mean. All right, so, oh, did I do this right? Yes, I did. Okay. Oh, I haven't finished my lines. Look at that. I need another line right here. I need something going down. That, this, this where's my finger? That line. <laughs> I need that line. And it starts right there. There we have the line. Now we have the line. Not bad, not bad. Okay, so now we can put in the word date. And if you have like stamps that say that, you could use that too. That'd be really cool. But honestly, it takes me, I could write it faster than it would take me to find my stamp. Anybody else feel that way? Yeah, yeah, I hear you. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Issued two. Okay. 
And now we're going to come in with some uh, some dates. How about February 8th? Oh, February 8th. And maybe uh, March 22nd. And then June 3rd. Okay, we have those. And then we're going to put some names in here. I think I put, uh, uh, let's see, I'm going to put uh, Felicia Jones. Um, Robert Eggles. Yep. And then, uh, oh, these are supposed to be signatures, Pam. What are you doing? You need to write them differently. You're right. Okay, now I'm going to come with a big, big fancy here. Um, this is going to be uh, Marsha Mellon. There we go. Marsha Mellon. She, she won prizes for her calligraphy compared to Felicia and Robert. They failed miserably, apparently. <laughs> Okay, there you go. So now we can uh, age this guy up a little bit just so he has that sort of weathered look. Like it's been around, you know, it's been in some little uh, grubby fingers that were eating potato chips and stuff like that while they were reading. You know how it goes. My husband, um, he, he, he can't say anything right now because he's out getting dinner. But um, <laughs> yeah, he used to nibble the corners of books as he read them when he was growing up. He goes, yeah, I used to eat the, I used to dog ear the corners and then they would tear them off and they would nibble it. And you could always tell a book I read because it was half eaten. <laughs> it was kind of strange. Oh, the weird lives we live. Okay. Um, now there's one more little, little accent to make this look more real. On the bottom, it says Demco 32-207. So guess what? We're adding that. Yeah, that's right. Here we go. Demco 32207. So sometimes it's just the subtle little um, extra details that you do to something. Now I could probably th thicken this up a little bit, maybe make it look more like um, a, a printing or, or not pr typing or something like that. But I think that's that's cute the way it is. And it's an adorable little macaroni. You know what I mean? Okay, that's Barnstorm. Let's get, okay, and here's Zambora. Okay, here's the one we just made. Let me back you out a little bit so we can see what we made. Okay. Now I'm going to work my phone. Okay. Here we go. Whoa. Backing out. Whoa. There we go. Okay. So this is the one we made. And does it fit? Oh, it does. It fits. Now the card does stick up above a little bit. And if you want to do something with the back, you could always cover the back or something. But I think, you know, it might be nice writing space. It, it's kind of a journal card in disguise. That's right. Okay. So we have this one. And then we have our old friend. L. Barnstorm, The Dream of the Butterfly. Let me just re-glue this lovely together so we can we can put it back together. Um, here we go. These are nice little, little, little add-ons, you know, like something special, a little bit different than a regular journal card, a little bit um, nostalgic, because a lot of people can relate to the old library card. They have seen it, they can relate, they understand. And where is L. Barnstorm? Here is L. Barnstorm. Now here is the original uh, The Princess and the Kiss by Jenny Bishop. And we will return her card. That is the prototype of the original. And this is just an example of a filled out uh, library card. So there you go. So I hope you enjoyed seeing these. These were a lot of fun to make. And uh, just another little thing that you can add in your junk journal, a little specialty item just to play with. So I hope you had fun. And um, Fluffer, do you have anything to say? Yes, I, I have. I, I, I think I have something. I have, I have something. And it, here I come. Here I come. Okay. All right. Um. Hello, everybody. How are you? Yeah, it's me. It's Sunny. And Dad just went to get dinner. And Mom, was that Dad? Dad, is that you? Are you back with the dinner? Mom promised I get a bite, a small bite, but there's a bite with Sonny's name on it. Yes, there is. Yay, me. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> okay, go get them. Dad's home. Go get them. Okay, yeah, we put jingle bells on the front door. So if you notice a little dingle bell, that's, <laughs> that's what that was. Okay. So, um, yeah, so I hope you're having good fun, um, lots of papery fun. Uh, there's always something to make. There's always something new to make. There's always something different to do here. And we can get together and have some more papery fun very soon. Um, we coming at you with more ideas. Um, little updates from the paper outpost. Let's see. 
I can tell you I have a merch store. Um, and thank you very much for those of you who have purchased some merchandise. I think that's that's really awesome. If you have a PC or a computer, you'll see the merch shelf in the drop down description box below the video. And if you don't have that, uh, there is a merch link, which apparently is also in the drop down box below the video. So I don't know how you'd ever find it, but um, it is there. <laughs> I can tell you it is there. And I will try and put it on the, the link on Instagram and some other things. So if you are looking for it, you can find it. And if you're looking for t-shirts and mugs and sweatshirts and totes and things like that, a zip hoodie um, with Create with Reckless Abandon on it, there you go. And what else can I tell you? Something else. Oh, I, I know I've told you about this, but in case you missed it, please, um, if you want to sign up for the free monthly email newsletter, you will get a free digital image emailed to you every month. Um, a note from the bookmaker, which explains what a junk journal is and how to use it. A checklist of supplies, which is seven or eight pages long. And um, you, you're going to get uh, junk journal tips, um, peeks at the digi kits coming up, and, and, you know, random facts for me. So there you go. Um, I have a Facebook group. If you haven't joined our Facebook group, come on over. We're doing weekly and monthly challenges. And I'm um, shaking that up a little bit over there, giving you kind of different things to do. Kind of see if I can shake you out of the woodwork. Um, and also seeing what you make from these videos. So uh, I really appreciate um, everything everybody is putting over there. It certainly inspires the heck out of me. So thanks for that. I have an Etsy shop where you can find fundals, which are collections of uh, very old antique or vintage papers, like old ledger paper, um, old postcards, old uh, book pages of so many things um, uh, and also um, interesting pages, um, uh, hand dyed papers, uh, different unique papers that you can all use in junk journals. So if you would like that, there's a hundred pieces in a pack and I mail those to you. And also um, I have vintage digital uh, digi kits in my Etsy shop. And what, what are those? What are those, Pam? Those are printable downloads that they come in uh, five pages. You uh, download them and print them and then uh, you can save them and you can print them out as many times as you want and you can use them in your art to um, uh, gift, share, sell, donate. Um, you can do anything you want with them. And um, um, what else? The, um, um, I was gonna tell you something. Oh, uh, oh, if you don't have a printer, I have a print and mail service. So um, you just give me the name of 10 digi kits that you want. Email me the list to pam at the paperoutpost.com or um, send the list through Etsy um, message. And then we will, um, I will, who I mean, the, the we, the we, me and Sonny, Sonny and I will pack it up and send it, print it out, pack it up and send it to you. There you go. And it's printed on a lightweight cardstock. And um, what else can I tell you? Um, I have, um, oh, occasionally journals and bundles and all sorts of other unique things that might just pop up in the Etsy store. And I plan on putting something else in in December. I don't know exactly what it's going to be yet, but keep your eyes open and I may do fanfare notification or I may just stay quiet and low and just slip some things in here and there. I'll see as I'm cleaning up my um, craft room, I, I've come across some things that I made and I might just want to pop them in there. We shall see. And um, you can find me on Instagram, Pinterest, Twitter, LinkedIn, and Facebook. I have an Amazon shop if you're looking for favorite tools and supplies. And also, um, if you find value here, please like, subscribe, and share, and click the bell. And remember, the fun can be simple and create with reckless abandon, everybody. Go on and have some papery fun, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.